Loud and clear? All right. All right, so uh, good afternoon. For those who do not know me, I'm uh, CW5 Deshaun Bell. I'm the Command Chief Warrant Officer of the Great Network Enterprise Technology Command and the moderator for this afternoon's panel of distinguished CW5s representing the signal and cyber communities. I'd like to first say thank you to Paul Sankey, and it's an honor to be here as a moderator. Uh, as you know, Paul is the uh, Cyber Center of Excellence Ch Command Chief Warrant Officer, and again, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. So before I put on my moderator hat, I would like to share some NETCOM initiatives that are aligned to data centricity. NETCOM mission is to lead global operations for the Army's portion of the DODEN, ensuring freedom of action in cyberspace while denying the same to our adversaries in support of multi domain operations. You've all heard this before, but you specifically heard it this morning from General Brito and Lieutenant General Morrison. So NETCOM's 2030 vision and charge is to be the premier communications organization and information services provider to all Dodin Army customers worldwide, ensuring all commanders have decision advantage in support of mission command with the multi within the multi-domain environment. And again, you heard this again, this morning from General Brito and Lieutenant General Morrison during the keynote. As such, we at NETCOM have three LOEs that were established by Major General Eubank, people, readiness, and continuous service improvement to get after the, 2020, the, excuse me, the 2030 vision. So I'll focus on the continuous service improvement, which focuses on optimizing the network and IT services, converging Army network and IT services, Continuous, continuously improve to achieve a unified network and improve organizational processes and procedures. Now, to get after LOE3, NETCOM hosts a bi-weekly Army Cyber Command and Network-led Continuous Improvement Activities Board, which synchronizes and manages all zero trust related enterprise efforts. Soon, this effort will expand to include a tactical edge by way of the Episodic Networks Initiative. This and next FY, NETCOM is performing many activities to achieve or support the DOD Zero Trust capabilities, including a security service edge crosswalk, improving Army endpoint security services and systems, developing an Army unified directory services, unified security information and event management, otherwise known as USEAM implementation, as well as executing data tagging for data loss prevention and digital rights management all in an effort to meet the Secretary of the Army's often mentioned goal of a data-centric Army. You heard this from Major General Stanton, as he mentions during his keynote address. In addition, NETCOM is working SD-WAN, data science, and hybrid cloud initiatives, as you can see. So NETCOM is working the SD-WAN technology within the Doden A. The Army will leverage SD-WAN with additional security components to transition off of JRSS gateways and optimize Army traffic routing and access with the DOD shifting to a zero trust architecture. The shift in software defined networking and network function virtualization technology increases the Army's operational efficiency by centralizing network management through orchestration. NETCOM developed this year an SD WAN plus security functional requirements document and a concept of operations. The FRD and the CONOPS were delivered to PEO EIS through PMIN this year and focuses on replacing JRSS by the end of FY27. JRSS and the legacy TLA stacks. So for the data, true to this name, uh, <clears throat> data-driven decision-making is an operational concept of using measurable data to guide strategic decisions. For a data-rich organization like NETCOM, there are countless opportunities to employ DDDM and NETCOM's data science directorate is uniquely trained and positioned to do so. Now this directorate is dispersed across four geographical locations, but DSD made significant headway through 2022 and 23 on a varied, proje on varied project portfolio. Specifically, the efforts of DSD's network operation and analysis division co-located with NETCOM headquarters at Fort Huachuca, focused on making existing data more accessible and include the following projects. In support of the effort to build out the Army's big data platform, NOAD works with our cyber to develop parcels that would assist with data storage of authoritative data sources in conjunction with the development of a consolidated operational data science environment facilitating project work. 
data sharing in near real time, and asset visibility in a secure environment. NOAC continuously works with the NETCOM G5 in effort to optimize IPv6 address assignment for the DOD through autonomous algorithms in order to better define ownership, type of device, and locations in order to improve asset visibility. Finally, our hybrid cloud initiative. The Army Enterprise Private Cloud is NETCOM's and the DAG6's approach to a hybrid cloud environment. AEPC is like C Army, but an on-premise approach. This provides on-demand, unified, interconnected enterprise computing capabilities, such as Army Enterprise Data Centers, Installation Service Nodes, and the Garrison Defense Platform, also known as GDP, and Enterprise Operation Centers. The difference from C Army is that these centers are Army-operated, on-premise capability. The AEPC platforms are components of the Army's portion of the Doden from operational and cybersecurity uh, standpoint and hosts in, on, on CONUS and OCONUS environments. Okay, so I said a lot, right? But we at NETCOM cannot do it alone. We must team up and take guidance and solicit and receive feedback from our supporting and supporting entities across DOD. The panel members each represent a key supporting and supporting entity to get after the challenges we face to create a data-centric environment on a unified network operations platform that is implemented while adhere, adhering to zero trust principles. With that, I would like the panel members to introduce themselves and the organizations they represent and enlighten the audience on how they are getting after modernizing, developing, and employing capabilities to enable data-centric operations. Mr. Jeremy Cost, over to you, sir.
we have about eight of them. And they're, uh, in some cases, duplicate, right? We don't have visibility of all of them. And that duplication you know, consumes resources across the enterprise. So we've been working closely with the CSOC and components to find a common baseline, right? And, you know, and I'll, I'll tell you, nobody's ever happy with the enterprise, right? We're never doing everything <laughs> we want everyone to do. So what's the 80% solution that meets a majority of the needs and that allows the flexibility for operational components and elements to add uh, additional applications, services, and software to meet you know, the tactical mission or the commander's objective. So we're, we're looking at, we recently had a soft enterprise mission environment we call it, uh, soft EME. Uh, and, and that is a global uh, IL2, IL4 cloud episodic enterprise, right? It allows us, and our, I say us, but primarily the components of CSOC to spin up uh, cloud Q-Store application capability based upon mission requirements and then proceed, execute, and then spin that down. It gives us common visibility across the entire enterprise. It gives us common security across the enterprise. Um, and it allows us to reduce that duplication of resources. But most of all, it allows our components to train for a mission on a common set of capabilities deploy forward and execute their mission, right? So we don't have seven TSOCs doing seven different things that four components are moving, you know, we have an ODA team come in and a SEAL team replaces them. You know, we have to have that commonality. Otherwise, the burden, uh, the burden of integration is at the point of, point of execution. And at the speed of the maneuver, we don't have time to conduct that execution or that integration. So again, this is primarily driven by CEO uh, TIS, uh, Director of EIS, and our TSOC components to get after the initiative. So again, that's, that's an IL2 core environment. An enterprise environment, right, is our traditional C2. It is your common and ubiquitous, right? Hey, this is where my email addresses live, our common security domain. How do we get that data from the tactical mission environment into the enterprise so we can do those analytics? And PEO SEA, along with SOCOM CDO, is really leading the charge in that effort. So, uh, particularly MCS Top uh, really is our mission command support element, and they are they are defining and delivering the requirements a lot like uh, Chief Cavalry just mentioned, you know, from a SOCOM perspective what that global and regional data environment looks like that allows us to aggregate, curate, and enrich data to inform commanders. Um, so we're in the process, we're in the nascent stages of rolling that out. SOC pack is our priority, right? Our number one priority in line with you know, the NDS. And then uh, as they look to pilot, we will run use cases uh, against that to uh, inform, adapt, and uh, continue to iterate on the environment we have. So this is all supported by transport, right? As we relook at compute and store across the SIE holistically to you know, revalidate what's required there, but we will also have to revalidate our transport requirements, both from a SATCOM and a terrestrial perspective. So the J6 is heavily looking at as we, again, look at the posture for our, our TSOC, and then the enterprise integrating them. What is that transport requirement? You know, what do we think it is? And then, you know, calming for and, and delivering that capability out to the force to set those conditions. And lastly, really, I'll talk about the, you know, broadly, the, the cross-domain architecture. So, again, as we look at tactical mission environments, how do we feed that data back into our secret and level uh, C2 network, right? Well, we do that through controlled interfaces and cross-domain solutions. So we're working closely with MSA and again, you know, TSOC and components based on mission requirements to identify the formats that are required both in a legacy, you know, when I say legacy, I mean a physical CDS um, solution and from a cloud perspective. So, hey, what are those formats? What do we have available from an enterprise solution? And what will we need to be pushed forward to deliver a tactical solution?
All right, thanks, Ronald. You said a lot, so um, drink, a, take a sip of water because um, you. Uh, I'm going to pull the thread a little bit, if you don't mind. So, because we got industry partners in the uh, audience, so I'd like to ask you, what are some challenges that are limiting the joint force from moving to a data-centric force? You kind of touched on that, right? But really, what, if anything, can industry do that can assist with the transition? Thank you. All right, so I look across the audience, I, have, I see a mix of um, senior warrants and junior warrants. So I'd like uh, to throw a question at uh, Chief Cosner, because he works at the network CFT. Um, and hopefully your, your response will resonate, particularly with the younger community that are going to those combat echelons. So the question is, you know, the Army is aiming to provide commanders with more data, but also to simplify the network for lower echelons as we move the unit of action up to the division. So how do you balance that from your network CFT perspective, those imperatives for large scale combat operation environment? That was no
Appreciate it. So far, Chief Everson, um, as a senior warrant at the Cyber Protection Brigade, which focuses on de uh, defense and cyberspace operations, how do we evolve defense and cyberspace operations to continuously protect against the consistent emerging threats? Appreciate that. So, uh, Chief Fernandez, as the uh, as representing our cyber, and also the DCO piece, um, into you know project to industry. How can in, how can um, industry help you in working towards modernizing their environment towards a data centric goal? All right, and last question I'm going to ask before we open it up to uh, the audience. So for Chief Godfrey, uh, I know your EW background, so can you pull the thread a little bit on the um, protected and resilient SATCOM capabilities?
I appreciate it. All right, I, I lied. I got one more question at the last minute uh, arrival. So this open up to the panel. Okay, what are some areas that the Joint Force and the Army can do to accelerate the adoption of data centricity for the Joint and the Army Force? And I'd like you to pose that as a challenge to industry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, uh, you know, so integrate systems and capabilities, right? Integration, unified systems. Um, you know, I think as we, when we're talking about uh, the different echelons, levels, cross services, multi domain, um, integration, I think is, is something that we definitely need to continue to get at.
All right. So, you know, warrant officers like to talk, and fortunately, I've just been informed there's nobody else coming into the room. So with that, I'd like to, no, no, I want to open it up to the panel, I mean, excuse me, to the audience um, for a couple of questions. Ma'am, right there. Okay. okay. Yeah, please, please make it to the mic. Here you, here you go. We're good? Okay. So my, Kath my name is Catherine Carter. We're from Tritus, and we do uh, CSFC data encryption, wired or wireless, all the way up to TSSCI, including wireless JWIX. And so when we look at this, we're seeing a lot more customers are actually applying a raise the bar effort across the spectrum, whether it's unclass to classified. Are you seeing that same need when it comes to data that you need to provide that more of that raise the bar, but yet at the same time not throttle the user experience and making sure they have access to where they want to go and then where they want to um, go down and across with cross domain? That's it. Good afternoon, my name is Sandra Schneider. I'm the president of Security University. We've been doing cyber education and training for 27 years this year. I know, um, and it's really great to be back at Fort Gordon having the future thought of talking to you guys more about education. But my question, and to everyone in this room, honestly, is are you guys aware of the Credential Assistance Program? Say yes, 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 yeah, yes, okay. So we can come down to Fort Gordon and all the vendors can come down to you. So if you guys gather up a mess of people, you all can get your credential training. We do it, we do it at Fort Bragg annually, like six times a year. But what are you doing to suggest to you and the people below you to get a credential or two or 10, if they're in for 10 years, you get a credential a year now that helps you be more capable as an you know, participant at the production brigade or more capable of, you know, basically earning what you need for your family as you get to separate. So my question is, what are you guys doing? Because I'm not hearing anything from anyone. So, so I'd like to add, um, I would kind of punt that to uh, the signal school because in my previous life as a tech director and a regimental, we would put that out to all the classes. And so I would just punt that over to the school. 
No, no, but, that, but that's the thing. But which, to your point, though, it needs to be put out. Yes. Right? So the, the, the information we put out with the caveats that you laid out can be put out. So we need to do a better job with the campaign. But I would, as I said, as I punt that over to the school, that's something that can be put out to that environment. Guys, let me tell you what. Two certs gets you $40,000 more a year. Three sets gets you $50,000. Four certs gets you $65,000 a year. When you step out, it improves your quality of life. Don't forget that. Hi, my name is Mike Brennan. I work with Comcast Business. And uh, right now we're partnering with DISA on the um, TDM modernization contract commercial Ethernet gateway, or KEG. And I've noticed that the Navy has really leaned in to take advantage of that contract, but I'm not seeing the same effort from the Army to give us or, or DISA all the addresses and look at physical diversity and upgrading to one gig and 10 gig bandwidth. So I was wondering from a Army perspective, where do you see the TDM transformation, modernization, and contract vehicles working? All right, so right now we're going through um, VMOD upgrades, but it's been coupled with VBOD upgrades for the infrastructure. Also, um, transition to soft clients on an 80-20 model where 80% soft client, 20% we have to keep um, hardwired phone, you know, for E911, elevators, things that way. So, without going into the specifics, I can assure you the Army is doing that um, through our, uh, I think it's, I forgot which PM it is, but it's under e, uh, PM or PEO EIS. One of the PMs that that's their focus right now is the VMOD and the, um, the soft client transition. So, can't answer if how they're tied to the Navy, and you mentioned that you don't see it, but it's happening. Maybe not on the DISA keg contract. I can't answer that. Yeah. yeah, I'm not in a position to answer that. It, what kind of, I can tell you it's being done, but I'm not, I can't answer what contract is being done under. Yeah. Okay. All right, we got time for one more question after this gentleman. Thank you. <clears throat> Chief Hernandez, you spoke on um, the effort to narrow data and data fields. So as a crew lead and a senior analyst on a CPT, I am super interested in this effort. Um, is there, can you elaborate at least a little bit on how you all are getting after that? Is there software solutions, methodology, something like that? How we're getting after that? All right, so it's really more of a methodology, right? So right now, going back to two years ago when we started, My name is Drew Schofield. I'm the director at uh, Zapata Technology, and I had a question for you all. You all seem to be talking about data is the problem. The data is the solution. Data is the problem. My question is, right now, are you considering any, I hate to call them Band-Aids, but integration efforts to be able to take uh, POR systems, legacy systems that are still being used today, and transition that data through a, another tool into your new platform?
All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for your time. Thank you for your participation.